So I just want to say a few things about the, um, the pre-genesis of this project. Uh, it's obvious that this is an unusual museum. Uh, this building designed by Mario Chiampi, which opened in 1970. And I think you can tell just by walking in here that it was built at a time when people imagined that the museum experience would be performative. Uh, this gallery space offers itself sort of naturally as a kind of an amphitheater. But I think what, uh, what this space, this architecture really calls for is this kind of dramatic, uh, engaging, uh, dynamic gesture to make the space the most welcoming and uh, a live possible destination for for the student body. And so I, I talked to, we have a student committee, I, I sat down with them and I said, what are the things that we should have if we want students to come here without even thinking about it? Uh, and they said, well, you know, uh, wireless internet, a uh, comfortable place to hang out, a really cool environment, uh, uh, a, social, a social space, uh, coffee. Uh, so I said, okay, we, we can do all of that. And so we transformed the entire gallery, uh, Tom did, into one giant seating sculpture. Our intention with this, uh, with Bandscape, is that during the day it function as a space for students or anyone who wants to come and study, uh, relax. You'll notice there's electrical outlets all over it, and so you can plug in your laptop and stay here for days if you'd like. Uh, there will be coffee and uh, food service in this space during the day. Uh, students are admitted free, so why go to the library when you can come here, you know? Um, and then on Friday nights, we will uh, have every Friday night music, uh, dance, spoken word, film, performance taking place all around and on top of this structure. So it becomes at night a, uh, a, seat, a seating space and a stage for, for performative activity. In many ways, this uh, freeform, amorphous, lumpy, um, irregular, um, kind of organ-shaped, blobby, bright orange thing is something that looks like it has nothing to do with a set of logics, and yet, basically, that's what generated all of this. The final outcome that we have here started to be understood as a type of internal landscape, and hence the name BAMscape, BAM as in Berkeley Art Museum. And uh, that, that this is something that's very much of the place here. And um, felt like that, that um, the, the title captures what we're trying to do here, which is let's make something so uniquely crafted for this, this kind of space, and this place, and this environment, and these kinds of users. Um, and as a landscape, as a type of landscape, an artificial one, um, and, and what is so interesting about landscapes is that, that they're not prescribed, they're open-ended, and that we find our own way through landscapes. And we imagine this as a, almost as a, as a clump of boulders, if you will, and, and how we basically, um, if we're looking around for a place to sit, it's not prescribed, um, but we basically invent how to engage with something. And, and that level of um, hopefully kind of uh, interactive and perceptual and bodily engagement with the space, but also a conceptual one in that now the onus is on the user to somehow discover and find instead of just, um, oh, sit here, as, as a typical sitting environment might start to do. All along, we needed to, to make something that's quite warm. And uh, we looked at a number of color schemes, but, you know, if, if we wanted to something of, of, uh, a color that would be inviting, and so the, the, the warm direction definitely was the way to go. And, and then to really give it some pop. And isn't this particular color taken from uh, one of the Hoffman paintings? It's, I mean, if you, if you stand up over there on that, that uh, uh, ramp, and you, you'll see Hoffman. With this color. Uh, and then you'll see this color, and there's so Hoffman, of course, was the founder of this museum. Uh, he paid for it to be built and gave 50 paintings, actually 47, we got three more later, uh, to the institution. And interestingly, uh, you know, Hoffman is an artist who, I mean, he's known as a painter, but pedagogy and kind of the social dimension of art was equally a part of his life project. And I think, so that's wonderful that this project also combines you know, art and activity and learning and, that kind of communal collective experience that was so much a part of Hoffman's life. Hoffman also, because his art was so much about dynamic form, 
uh, a lot of people who were not just two-dimensional painters, but people working in time-based media were inspired by Hoffman. People like Ken Jacobs, the filmmaker Ken Jacobs, Jack Smith, the performance artist, actually studied with Hans Hoffman. Uh, so Hoffman had a legacy in terms of performative activity as well as two-dimensional work, and in a way set the stage for you know, what we're really seeing now, not just here, although this is exemplary, but in museums all over the world really embracing time-based activity as part of the essential um, purpose of museums, not just static objects, but action and, uh, and dynamism and engagement.